How much does where you live matter in your life? That's what we're going to talk about today. Home is not where you live, but where they understand you. Christian Morgenstern. Today we're going to talk about the book, This is Where You Belong, Finding Home, Wherever You Are, by Melanie Warnick. This book got recommended all over the place, and I was somewhat dying to read it, primarily because I don't like where I live. It's, it's funny. A lot of people like living where I live. It's a nice town. It has amenities in it. It has good restaurants in it. But first of all, I'm Jill from the North Woods. I want to be in the North Woods. I don't really want to live in a city. How I got here is I went to college here, and then I ended up just staying here. My whole life, and if you listen to the podcast at any amount of time, had a rough childhood. Alcoholism and mental illness and being in the military, being a kid of a military person, we moved around a lot. I've lived in Montana, Texas, Arizona, and the North Woods. It was my favorite place I lived, and it was primarily where I lived right before I went to high school. My dad retires. We go to a small town, a small, very blue collar town in the Midwest. Fine. But I was going to college and I ended up going to college in a city that was a little bit bigger. But you can kind of see that my whole life, I lived by myself. I taught myself how to live. I was raising myself and I always called it being raised by wolves. But essentially, everything I learned, it came from books, it came from learning something. And so I came to college here. And finally here, I found my people. I found the people I was meant to be with, and I really liked being with them, and they love it here. So I ended up here, too. I can't convince them to go back to the North Woods because there's a lot of snow up there, and, well, there's not much else there, but a lot of snow. And now I live here, and it's just not primarily one of the places I really wanted to live. But you know what? There's more to where you live than just that. And she starts off the book by talking about that we think sort of magically about where we live, that we think we can cure all our ills in our lives. Oh, I'm not making enough money, but if I moved over there, I'd make more money. I I remember one fellow, he ended up having a pretty good job, but he found a job that paid a lot more money and this was going to be his chance to get ahead. Except I pointed out to him, this town he was moving to was one of the most expensive places in the United States to live. So Was he really going to get ahead if he was making 20% more, but almost doubling his expenses? And so we just think, if I just lived over there, whatever problem is haunting me would be better. And I have a little bit of that too, because I think, oh, if I lived near the woods, I'd be near the woods all the time. I would be happier. I would like the area I lived more. Unfortunately, it's probably not true because I would get up there and I'd be like, well, how come there's not a grocery store open at midnight? I need such and such. Oh, well, that's right, because I moved to the North Woods. Or, boy, it'd sure be nice to go to a fantastic steak restaurant. Oh, no, they don't really have that here. Or, even worse, where I would like to live, it's probably about two hours away from a major hospital. What if something happens to me right now? Hospital is four miles that way. I am there in a flash. When my bird got sick, put them in the little cage and took him down to the vet five minutes that way i have everything i need here and so you think you would potentially cure things in your life by living somewhere else but you have to also think that there's going to be things that are going to be different and worse off even if you're living in a place you love there's something to be said first of all she calls it um some sort of a psychological effect by clearing the slate and it's absolutely true so when i Grew up in the military, and my dad moved around all over the place with us. There was something to being in a new place that let you reset yourself. Uh, I was in really young grade school, the class clown. I told all the jokes. I was restless. I didn't pay attention to the teachers. I was always screwing around. And then it gave me a chance when I came to my new high school. I thought, Jill, you got to calm down a little bit. You're a little too over the top. And so I changed my personality. No one in this new town knew me from before. So I was able to moderate a bit, change my personality, I guess, or how I came off. I was a little bit more quiet. I was a little less all the time jokes. And I ended up becoming a much more serious student. It also gave me the ability because the school had more clubs, more things to do. 
And so it did expand my horizons, but I got to reset me because I got to move to a whole new place. So there is something to that. But, you know, they always say that no matter where you go, there you are. And you are always there with you. So in a sense, it's very possible you could replicate a lot of the things that was wrong in the first place. We live in an era and a time where a lot of particularly young people want to be nomadic. There's no reason with remote work. You maybe have to live anywhere or you may want to work anywhere. You want to go someplace else and work someplace new. I hear all sorts of people who talk about going to Europe and traveling around. And the interesting thing she said when I was listening to this podcast is that it's very easy to live a digital nomadic life where you're traveling around and doing your job from place to place. But as soon as you want to settle down, it becomes considerably harder because getting working visas to stay in a particular place for a long period of time is very, very hard. You have to prove that you're not going to be a burden on society. So it becomes even harder to stay someplace new if you found, oh, I love this place. She was talking about it, how she loved Portugal. She wanted to stay there. She couldn't get a visa. So it was easier for her to move, to move, to move, to move to the next place instead of staying. About 37% of people never leave their hometown. In fact, I just went to my class reunion. A lot of people still live in the same town we grew up. I live in the same state I went to high school in. Sometimes people go and sometimes people just decide to stay. And it's even worse, I think, that people are primarily, and this book was written before the pandemic, I bet you the statistic is higher, that people change jobs every four and a half years. When I grew up, my dad's generation, you did the same thing 30, 40 years. Got a nice pat on the back when you worked at a company for 40 years. Our generation, my generation is a little bit different. Maybe you work 10, 15 years, you go on and do something else. And now the new generation just doesn't do that much at all. And six and 10, again, before the pandemic, kids moving out of their family home moves to a different town, but 57% of them stay nearby. And people, you ask people, they'll say, I feel community here. I know people. My aunts and uncles are here, the people I grew up. If you ask my friends why they stay in this particular area, it's the place they know that I'm a little bit different because I move so much. I'm not as rigid about it. I don't think of a hometown as a place necessarily, or instead more like a, an area or a region. They lived here. They grew up their whole life. Their family's here. Everything they know here. She, my friend said, well, where am I going to go to the dentist? And where am I going to go to the eye doctor? And where am I going to get a plumber? I'm pretty sure that every place has eye doctors, dentists, and plumbers. But she knows them, and she feels comfortable with them, and she feels a sense of community here. Now, me, I'm fairly new in relative speaking to this area, so it's not really my home, but it is her home. And people are physically healthier, happier when they live in a place that they consider to be home, when it's their home. And so she wanted to write a book that talked a little bit about feeling at home no matter where you're at. For example, what can you do to love the place you live in much more? So that's why I thought this book would be good for me. Could I learn to love where I live a little bit more? Now, this person, I got the feeling when I read the book, is a city person. I'm not a city person. And so she feels there's a lot of cultural advancements, museums, art, things to do that exist inside of a city that don't exist other places. To me, I don't think the trade-off is worth it. But for her, she felt that it is nourishing to her soul to live in a place that is so culturally thick with things. I've been to New York. I, I Wonder if she's not from New York. Some of the people who reviewed her book is from New York. I like New York. I thought it was a really cool city. And this was back probably about 10 years ago. But it has a lot of personality, has a lot of blue collar oomph to it. I really enjoyed what was in New York City. But to me, I could never live in a place like that. It is too noisy. It's too many cars. Someone asked the question, would you like where you lived more if it had a bigger public transportation system? And I said, no. I want to live in a place that's so small it doesn't need a public transportation system. That's exactly what I'm looking for. That's not what everyone is looking for. And she says that as soon as you get to know a place a little bit better, you get a mental mapping of it. Everything kind of becomes home, right? I know where I go to see my gym trainer. I know where I go to see the doctor. Everything's very comfortable and I don't have to think about it all the time. Now, what I would say to my friend who would probably just say what I just said, you know what? No matter where I live, I'd find out where my gym and my doctor and everything else is. You, you'll find a place. And so she says one of the best things that you could do in order to get to know your city better is to go for a walk. 
get to know it better, make sure you're safe, but that'll make you understand what's around you a lot better. It's funny because I do do that when I used to travel for work and I've been to 52 different customers, so it's probably 52 different cities and I would have a walk. I never do it here and that's what she's recommending, getting to know a city by going for a walk. And she talks a little bit about stores, how we got into the big box stores. And it's true because now cities are looking a little bit more and more like each other. They still have their own flavor and personality. But it, I used to go shopping in Woodfield Mall, which is outside of Chicago. And it has all sorts of unique little stores and they were kind of neat. And all of a sudden, then the chain stores started coming out. And then he sort of felt, well, I could, I could go anywhere. I could go to my own mall and hit some of these stores. And so she talked about how sometimes the personality of cities change when big box stores came in. And she's absolutely right. There is something to be said about the fact that when I went for my walk in Beverly Hills, there was Trader Joe's, there was Best Buy, stores I recognized. You start realizing, mm, now this is starting to feel the same. But I still think there's enough uniqueness about cities that mm -hmm. different from each other. And she even talked about a branding company whose whole job is to help a city find out what they're good at, what they attract in people. And talked about Duluth and how Duluth, which I love Duluth, was kind of a sad little city in, in her mind that a lot of people didn't go there. A lot of people were moving out. And instead, what happened is that they got a branding market and they started realizing they are an outdoor wonder. I went hiking lots of places near Duluth. I went to the sh shores of Lake Superior, which is gorgeous. Once you get that identity, then people can say, I want to go visit there. So New York, blue collar, L.A., entertainment. I even saw a guy in the show Vikings across the street from my restaurant. I mean, you get different vibes from each city, Birmingham and the barbecue and just kind of the old culture of that place. Florida, birds, tropical palm trees, all those things. So you get the idea. And she talks about that now that cities are starting to feel a little bit more bland and a little bit more the same. They're starting to hire identity managers to give them this impression of what it is that they are all about so that people know, hey, I want to visit Duluth. It's a really great natural wonder. And so then she says the other step to making sure that your home feels like your home is to say hi to your neighbors. I did a podcast last week about saying hi to your neighbors, getting to know your neighbors better. It all starts with hello. That was the book that we talked about. But that's a big part of it. If you feel like you don't know your neighbors, your neighbors don't know you, maybe you give each other a stink eye because you don't like their dog and they don't like your RV parked in your front driveway, whatever it is, you're not going to feel at home. And so by knowing people and getting to pe know people in your neighborhood, that will make you feel more at home. That's something I've been trying to do is saying hi to my neighbors a little bit more. And a lot of them, including my neighborhood, will have a picnic every year where you could get to know your neighbors better, too. And what's nice about, you know, once you know your neighbors and you know a little bit more about them is you'll help each other out. I remember one time I had a huge windstorm here and I had these tiles in my garbage can that I was throwing out from redoing my basement. And they tipped over and they all started flying down the street. And me and this guy I never met, my neighbor, started running down the street trying to catch them all. And he helped me make sure that we captured them all and they didn't end up just garbage in the street. But every once in a while, you know, you get to meet your neighbors and you start helping each other. I told my neighbors if they need someone to go feed their cat, I'd be happy to do it. Or one time I was driving by and I saw one of my neighbors struggling. I went and got my shovel because it was snowing and they were stuck and I dug them out. So be, knowing your neighbors is also just a benefit to you. Also means, too, that if they see someone going into your house, that's not you. They might call the police and say, someone's breaking into my neighbor's house. But if they don't know you, then maybe they won't. Her next suggestion is to go find something fun to do in your hometown. That might be a brand new museum or brand new park. It was funny because I just this summer found a couple of new parks that has birds in them. I bird watch, and that's why I have Buzz Blossom and Squeak podcast. I go bird watching. And it's been great to find these new little nooks and crannies of new birding places. And sometimes now I belong to a birding group on social media. And someone will say, oh, at this park, we just saw this bird. And I run over there and I'm like, I never knew this park was here. So that might be one thing. Again, museums, cultural events, go see a show. My friend got us tickets to go see a couple of plays last year and a concert. Small town stuff. I mean, small city stuff, but it was fun and it was interesting to do. It also might be that your town is known for a particular thing. If you go to San Francisco, it was that Union Square 
had all these stores. I don't, I don't think they have them anymore, but that was the thing. When I went to New York, I saw two Broadway shows, The Lord on the Roof and The Lion King. When I went to L.A., I decided to get cryotherapy. So I tried to find out what that area is known for and then go do that thing. I still eat avocado toast. So if you get to know a town and you get to know it a little bit better, then you can go do the thing the town is known for. One way that I started learning more about the town I live in is when I would have customers that would come to town for training, when suddenly I'm supposed to take them to a restaurant, show them something fun to do. And so I had to learn my town a little bit better because I had to show someone else what the town was about. But what was interesting is I had some coworkers come from India. The host who was hosting them set up a couple of people from work and everyone had a chance to spend a day with the team and show them something fun that was in town. He gave me a list of some suggestions, but we ended up taking them to a wine test tasting place in this area. We also then took them to a local, really amazing state park that's just beautiful. And then he suggested we take them to a gambling casino. And I, that was not my favorite place in the world, but they got kind of a kick to see something that they just wouldn't see when they're at their home. She says getting involved in nature. That's what I like to do. I like to go find bird watching places or animal watching places. And this summer, because my friend and I lost our park that we usually go to, it was under construction with the road right in front of it. We found a dozen new parks that we've been going to. So getting out and enjoying whatever nature thing is there is pretty great. When I was in New York, even, there were a lot of people sitting around Central Park just enjoying all the animals. I remember they were excited to see the squirrels. And I thought, really? Squirrels? A lot of squirrels where I live. But, you know, to them, it was fun and it was getting outside in nature. She suggests volunteering, joining a local organization that helps someone in your town, maybe tutoring or doing something and helping a local community. When you do that, it takes you out of, I think, your own bubble. It takes you out and gets you to meet other people. You get to meet the other people who are volunteering, but you're getting to meet the people that you're helping too. You sort of see your community as a much richer place because there's people who need help and they're grateful for it. There are people who are helping and that's wonderful. And it makes you feel like you're a part of whatever community you're in. She also recommends eating local foods. And this is a big thing I'm about is that I love to eat whatever's local. The project manager I used to train with, she had three rules for eating out. And since we worked together all the time, we had our three rules. And the three rules were eat someplace local, eat outside if we can, and try to make sure if it's a coast that we see the body of water it's a coast of. When we were in Hawaii, we spent a lot of time watching the sunset go down over the ocean. But we had a great time. We got to eat whatever was local, whatever is a specialty there. And at one point, I was spending a lot of time in the South. I ended up doing a barbecue contest. So I wanted to see from Kansas City to Texas to Carolinas to Alabama who had the best barbecue. And then at the conference for my company, I ended up giving someone a barbecue award. By the way, it was Birmingham, Alabama. Best barbecue I ever had. But eating locally makes you appreciate your area better. If you're just eating at a chain food all the time, you don't really appreciate what good restaurants are there that put their own kind of accent on whatever type of food is there. Every place has a food I learned. When I went to Virginia, I was thinking, what do people eat here? So I had Virginia ham, right? So you got to figure out what is the specialty of the place you're going. I don't like fish, but when I was in Hawaii, fish is the big thing. I also ate a lot of macaroni salad and coconut sauces and pineapple sauces. That's kind of cool. So find out what exactly is the big thing, wherever it is you're going. Or maybe even better yet, a farmer's market, local produce. Went to a lot of farmer's market while I traveled for work. She suggests that you could create something, which might be something like those little book stands where people walk by and pick up a book or a small business or a piece of art that people appreciate when they're walking by your backyard or become a regular someplace. We always see like the TV show Cheers where it was like, hey, and everyone knows each other. Maybe you need to be known someplace. So if you go to a restaurant or a bar or a painting wine club, become a regular so people know you when you go there. That's kind of an exciting thing. And that'll make you feel more at home where you live. And she says in the end, settle down, feel at home, feel the love and stop looking everywhere else to see if you can feel at home someplace else. I mean, that's for me, right? 
I see the weather and I see, ah, oh, here's my home. My home is up north. Look at it. It's getting snow. I, I pine for it all the time. And when I go camping up there, which I like to do, as soon as I get there, I just breathe the air and I hear the sounds around me. Maybe have to do a little less pining and start yelling at home right here. I noticed that when I was driving home last week, I went to a conference. I spoke at a conference and there's two ways to, for me to go home. One is by an interstate and the other way is through a back road. I love this back road. And I started thinking, well, which way should I drive home? Should I take the interstate, which is much faster, or should I take this back road? And I thought, you know what? This back road between me and where I go birding and I love to go hiking, that's the place I feel home is along this road. When I'm driving down this road, I feel the most comfortable I do living here. So even though it took me a little bit longer, I went and took the back road. It made me feel like I really was coming home. So there are some suggestions. Like, like I said, I hope that it helps you to feel a little bit more at home and feel more identity with where you live. If we don't give the places a chance where we live to, to help us make us feel better, make us feel better about where we live and the places we go and the places we work, We'll never feel good here. And that's what I've been doing for a really long time. I told my friend, I said, I don't live here. I just stay here. And that's really the wrong attitude to have because it guarantees I will never feel at home in this town. And maybe it's time I stop fighting it so much and just recognize that the place I used to live is a great place to go on vacation, a wonderful place to go camping. But you know where I live? I live right here. And stop fighting it so much. It's probably my attitude that makes me feel that I'm not at home here more than anything else. And if I start exploring this area better and treating it better, probably I'll feel a little bit more at home too. So my challenge to you is write down 10 things that make you feel at home where you live. What kind of restaurants? What kind of cultural activities? What kind of nature? What kind of activities do you do? Do you volunteer? Are you invested in your town at all? And see if you can identify more with the kind of things that make you feel more at home. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast and watching the video, whichever way you're doing it. And I hope that this has been beneficial to you. Again, if this book helps you a little bit in understanding better about where you live and maybe understanding how you could enjoy it better, I, do, I think it would help you a great deal. Please remember that I have a better life in smallsteps.com. The links are going to be in the show notes, wherever it is you're watching or listening to this. And though it has all my other podcasts, my videos, everything is right there. Please remember that you can always email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I'd love to hear from you. And if there's a book that you would like me to review, I'd be happy to do it. And remember, our walk around our hometown takes small steps, big eyes, and big ears to hear and see all the things around us. 